this I Am Road Smart video looking at the growing number of driver assistance features available on cars today. I'm Rebecca Ashton and with me is Tim Shellcross, I Am Road Smart's Head of Technical Policy. Hi Tim. Hello Rebecca. How are you? Very well. Good. So you've brought along your Mercedes-Benz, I think it's an E300. It is. And you're going to show us what you think are the most important driver assistance features your car has. It is, but one important thing is I like fancy cars, that's why I'm head of technical <laughs> policy. So yes, it's a fancy car, but it's five years old and this technology that we're talking about is on the Fords, the Kia, the, the everyday car now. It's not just reserved for this kind of vehicle. So what you're saying is this technology is actually out there and can suit most people's budgets. Yes, and it's becoming standard on more and more brand new vehicles because it's relatively cheap for the manufacturers to do. I don't want to bore you with all the technology, but it's all based around the fact that there's a radar scanner at the front of the car behind the Mercedes badge and there's two radar scanners at the back of the car and there's some very fancy cameras up by the interior mirror. And because it's got that visual and radar information about what's around the car, that's the fundamental mental basis on which all the driver assistance features are based. Well, I'll tell you about uh, automatic emergency braking, autonomous emergency braking, generally called AEB. Okay. People call it a variety of different things. Now, based on the radar scanner out the front and the camera, that puts the brakes on if you are approaching a queue of stationary traffic, for example, and you're not paying attention and you haven't noticed it. Now, a lot of people confuse that with something else that this car's got called adaptive cruise control. Now, you see that dashboard display we've got at the moment? Yes. That's showing our car, yep. and it also shows you can set the distance that you want to follow the vehicle in front. Yep. And that can be anything from about one and a half seconds to about two and a half seconds. Right, and of course, we know that we should really try and keep two seconds between us and the, the car in front. But the brilliant thing is, this is doing it for us. Let's say I've set it all and my following distance is obviously good. Yep. What happens if a car perhaps pulls out from um, the one of the lanes in, in front of me? What does it do then? It will simply slow down gradually. It won't slam the brakes on, it just eases off the power until that gap increases. If you are too close, it flashes a little warning sign on the, the dashboard. But generally, it's provided that car is moving faster than you, which generally they are mm -hmm. if they're cut in front of you, it won't slow down dramatically. It will just ease off the power, just as you would, and allow the distance to increase and then resume power when it's at the safe following distance. Tim, I notice on the door mirror, I've got an orange triangle that's lit up. What's that all about? Again, because we've got radar all around the car, the car's sensing what's around it, this is a blind spot warning, right? The okay. mirror's got good coverage and I've adjusted them correctly as you'd expect, but if a car is uh, coming up in my blind spot on either side and I indicate, I'll get a warning light, uh, a, a warning beep comes on to warn me that I'm about to change lane when there's a car in the way. So that's actually a really good safety feature for people. An excellent safety feature. And it, it, surprisingly, it works really well on roundabouts. It works really well um, when you're exiting, exiting a, a motorway junction. And the other time it works really well is that thing we've all come across, which is where I'm in lane one, I want to move to lane two. What I didn't realize is the car in lane three who's now changing into lane two. Oh. And there's always that danger of the two coming together. We've all seen it happen. A lot of us will have had it happening to us. Yes. That gives you an instant warning. Another one based on the camera up here, right behind the rear view mirror, right. is lane keeping assistance oh. uh, and that does two things one is if you are drifting across the lane on a long journey uh, and getting too near the white line it sounds a bleep it warns me in this mirror and it sounds a buzzer and should display on the dashboard to tell me that i'm crossing the lane and it also gives a slight nudge to the steering wheel oh you'll feel it as well you'll feel that you know, like if you're on one of these PlayStation things and you get that buzzer where the, the thing sort of vibrates in your hand, yeah. that's exactly what you get on the steering wheel, just oh. to remind you that it's drifting towards that white line. Can you see this little green, this, this little steering wheel here? Yes. When I'm in cruise control, that will often turn to green. And that means that the camera is picking up the white lines in front of me or below about 30 miles an hour. It means it's picking up the car ahead of me. Or the right. Ahead of me and that will now actually help me move the steering wheel just to keep me in the center of the lane Gosh. it doesn't actually move it for me but it it just hints that i want to move that way or that way to keep me 
positionally right in the centre of the lane. So it's a little bit of encouragement? Yes, so you still need to pay attention, but it's a driver aid. It just makes the whole drive much more relaxing. Yes, I, I think we need to make that clear and that these systems are safety systems. They are there purely to assist us. They are not there to take over everything for us. We are still in charge. We still need to make sure that we're driving as well as we can be and use these systems as they're meant to be, which is to help us if we lack that moment of concentration, they will help us then. Absolutely right.